Of these institutions, the most important are money and property rights. As we will see, these institutions permit what we will call market prices to take shape in exchanges. Market prices are historical ratios of exchange, and they make economic calculation possible. The term calculation derives from the Latin calx, calcis. Do you know what Roman abacuses were? The Romans had no calculators, but they, and the Chinese as well, added and subtracted very quickly using an abacus, which was a series of lines with perforated limestone pebbles in them. A person could perform fast calculations with them, ones, tens, hundreds. Each of the pebbles was made of limestone, calx, and since the term calculi was used to refer to the pebbles, the abacus, which enabled people to calculate, led to the term economic calculation. We will see how economic calculation is made possible by the bridge that connects the internal subjective realm of valuations, I think I gave an example in class, with the external realm of computation. The bridge is the existence of a free market in which exchanges take place, thanks to property rights, and these exchanges are reflected in monetary prices, because there is a monetary unit. There is an ordinal realm of subjective valuations, and it permits only comparisons, greater than or less than. It is an internal realm, internal, ordinal. And there is a cardinal realm of numerical calculations. And it permits computation. What keeps the world in constant motion is the internal realm of our subjective valuations. Nevertheless, out in the market, we see quotes, stock exchanges, prices, numbers, balance sheets. How do we pass from the internal ordinal realm to the external cardinal realm? What bridge connects them? We will see that this bridge comprises two institutions, free exchanges and money, which is an institution. Where these two are present, a market price is set in each exchange and the market price reflects a quantitative historical reality, which permits numerical computation. If, on the contrary, as occurs in socialist regimes, the free exchange of capital goods is prevented by force, then market prices cannot be set for these goods, and economic calculation is blocked. So we see how institutions emerge from the market process, while at the same time they make it and economic calculation possible. We will define economic calculation as the entrepreneurial estimate, in terms of monetary units, of the value to acting human beings of the different alternatives or courses of action they imagine. People need to make that calculation to know which alternative is most important or valuable to them, and direct their action towards achieving it, while rejecting those they value less. As you know, the cost is the subjective value attached to what is given up when a person acts. Well, in the process of human action, economic calculation directs us towards those ends we value most, and it reduces the costs or helps us avoid incurring costs that exceed the value of our ends. That is, it helps us avoid losses. Economic calculation is possible due to the information entrepreneurship generates when people buy and sell in the market, and to the institutions which emerge from the entrepreneurial process, and at the same time make this process possible. Language is another essential institution, the language we speak. It also emerges in an evolutionary manner. No one discovered Spanish. It emerged as the result of an evolutionary process. So did double-entry accounting. It is also a curious language. It arose over many generations of merchants who needed to be able to determine whether they had made a gain or sustained a loss and set budgets for the future. Economic science is full of wonders, isn't it? There is a peculiar apparent paradox in the fact that the institutions most vital to human beings, to our lives, to our achieving success in our chosen projects, morality, law, language, money, the institutions which are most important to human civilization have not been deliberately created by anybody. Instead, they have arisen owing to custom throughout a spontaneous process involving millions of human beings from many generations. However, if you think about it, this should not surprise us. 
since those institutions are so vital to our lives precisely because they incorporate a huge volume of experience, of knowledge or information, which happens to come from the millions of human beings who have participated, each with his or her own small contribution of experience throughout history. This vast volume of information far exceeds any human being's capacity to analyze or comprehend it, no matter how wise or good the person is. Only a posteriori, in view of the institutions which have taken shape, can economic science account for even the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. A fraction of the role played by these institutions, these patterned behaviors, which, as we recall, enable human beings to face, with greater chances of success, the ineradicable uncertainty that pervades our lives. We don't know what the future will be like, because it will depend on entrepreneurial knowledge, which is constantly, at all times, being created ex novo. I could mention another institution, the company, understood as an economic organization which is an integral part of the entrepreneurial process.